I am so happy to be here. Um, I am so happy to speak to you about what we're going to do in the future with this crowd and what we aim to do with the company. Um, I mean, look around. Look at the people around you, your neighbors, people in front of you and behind you. And you will see beautiful people. People that are ambitious. People that want to take personal responsibilities, want to do something out of their lives to achieve their goals and dreams. These are people of going places. And then all around you, where there's 4,000 of you in here, that is energy that makes me, you know, get goosebumps, as a good friend of mine says all the time. I think we have a fantastic future in this group, just because of the energy, and the commitment, and the passion that you guys feel. Peter said before that nothing is impossible. You can do anything. Everybody can. And I'm going to tell you a bit about my background in order for you to understand where I come from and why I love this so much. I come from, you know, things are relative. I come from what we in Sweden would say, I come from nowhere. But, you know, compared to Philippines and South Africa, it's still a highly privileged situation. But I really I come from a small farm outside a small village, outside a small city in the middle of nowhere. I was dyslexic, so I can't read and read, really read and write. But I am ADHD, and that's why I'm hyper-energetic and I walk back and forth on the scene all the time. And I do not have a very good relationship with my father. So I was always in a mess and in problems. I was lousy at school, and I really did not like school at all. And I applied to it in any way. So the only thing I really liked to do was ski. And um, uh, I finished my high school with bad degrees. I didn't get on to university and my military service. I didn't do that very well either. I went skiing. I went skiing for four years. And after four years, I had a really bad ski accident, a car accident, and I wrecked my leg and I had to go to the hospital for half a year. And um, as I came out of there, I realized that my skiing career was over and that I had to get a bit of job. And it was difficult to get jobs at that time if you didn't have a good education. So I needed to go to university. The problem is I didn't have the grades, the grades to be able to get in. So what did I do? I nagged myself in. I went up to the university acceptance in the admissions office five times, ten times in five days, every morning and every afternoon with chocolate cakes, with flowers, in a bag of sweets, big smile, watercolor hair, and flirting with the girls at the desk. And on Friday afternoon they said, well, we better let you in and we'll never get rid of you. So this is lesson number one for you guys. Never take no for an answer. If you fundamentally want something and feel that it's really important to you, do not take a no for an answer. It doesn't matter that I actually pushed somebody out who theoretically was more uh, eligible to be in there because they had better degrees for me. They weren't ambitious enough to make sure that they got it. I was ambitious enough to make sure I got it, even though I was not going to have the right because I did not take no for an answer. So I get into the university, and I'm still dyslexic. I really read slowly, and I spend so much time focusing on the letters that I can't remember what I read. So I need to read things two times. I read things half as slow as most of you guys in here. It means I have to spend twice as much time as all of you guys here to remember the same things. So here's another lesson. What does that mean? If it takes me twice as much time to do something, how much time do I have to put in? Twice as much. It's as easy as that. Bill Gates, Bill Gates says, life's not fair, we used to it. And he is so right. Life is not fair. And like Peter said, we are all winners. And we are all winners. And it's really, really fair to us. So we should be really glad that life's not fair because it could have been so much worse than that they had. Because we are born ambitious. We are born with dreams and ambitions and aspiration and energy to try and take us from the position where we are to the position where we want to be. And that makes us incredibly fortunate. Most people are lazy and dumb in the sense that they don't believe in themselves, they don't have any dreams for the future, they have no ambitions. But you have all this. You have all that it takes to make the impossible possible. Because the impossible is. I said impossible is good, because that's the way it is. So anyway, what did I do? I studied twice as much.
much as everybody else at university. Mm. I fight, I struggle, because I'm never going to give up. Third lesson, I'm never going to give up, and I'm never going to take no for an answer, and I'll do what it takes to get what I want. Eventually, I finish university. In very good grades, I get a job. A very important Swedish company, and I had a five-year super career with this fantastic entrepreneur. And I learned a lot of things in this process. As, a, as an individual of a society, the most beautiful person there is in the, in, the, in the country, of any country, as an entrepreneur. Because an entrepreneur comes up with ideas, that solves problems, that helps people, and creates jobs, and people get salaries, and with salaries they can buy things and more people can work. The essence of capitalism and prosperity is an idea, is an entrepreneur. Now what do you need to become an entrepreneur? Do you need that? An idea. Does it have to be a good idea? No, it can be a stupid idea, as long as you can sell it. So if the most beautiful person for the society is an entrepreneur, the most beautiful person for an entrepreneur is the salesperson. Because the salesperson creates true value. They are the person who pays every bill. And is there anybody in here who's never had an idea? Thank God not. So we all have ideas, and that's all you need. And we cry, why do you even need, don't even need an idea? We'll give you the ideas. We'll give you everything you need to be an entrepreneur. All the tools, the background, the web, the back office, the transformation systems. We'll give you everything you need. Does that mean that everybody's going to get rich? No. Club One is not a charity organization. It is not self-fulfilled that you'll be rich just because you're part of Club One. And everyone can become really, really rich if you never give up. We will, I promise you, I would not be here if I did not believe that I could supply you with the products and the things, services, and whatever it is that you need to sell. To, to train, I can give you to bring yourself from where you are to where you want to be. I would not be on the stage. I will break my back over the next 10 years to supply you with the products that we need. So, fantastic voyage. We are going to change things fundamentally. I will tell you how the world looks today. Today, if you develop a software of any type, an app, a game, a, a really smart product or something, you probably come from Silicon Valley, New York, London, Berlin or Stockholm. That's basically a handful of cities. You come out with a software the same day as 20,000 other products that day. It means that regardless of how good your product is, you have no chance of breaking through. You're not going to be successful. How many apps do you download a week? There's 20,000 coming out every day. So, what do these companies have to do? They have to get into the seat to you. The first of the VC companies. The VC companies, basically you have uh, really and truly developed venture capital and guess what cities? Silicon Valley, New York, Stockholm, Berlin, and London. The rest of the countries and cities around the world that you have venture capital capital. So these software companies have to get to the venture capital companies, show what they have, beg them for money. And the VC companies only have to look at a thousand companies a year, so just the chance of getting in is minimal. Then they invest in five companies, and the chances are if you win, the chances will get money is yeah. And if you get in, you get the money. They take 40% of your company, and they give you 110 million dollars. 10 corporations and 100 million for, for advertising around the world, the Western world. And you do this by sending all the money to Silicon Valley, but they don't need the money. To the monopolist Google and Facebook who have stolen your digital identities, who have stolen the assets and the true values that you create every day within your network, within your community, your friends. And they force these people to put advertising based on the content that you are producing. 
then they, because nobody had tricks on the banner, or very subtle, and it got really high um, customer acquisition costs. And these apps eventually get fairly big and start making money. And all the money that's gone to advertise for the customer position goes to Silicon Valley. And eventually these companies become successful. 10, 15 years after that, they start looking at Philippines, South Africa, Argentina. Which means that the company countries that are really, really rich, because all the advertising, all the new products that are developed here, and it takes 10, 15 years for the third world to develop it. Well, it means that they're getting further and further behind the digital divide. It means that they're getting relatively poorer because it's new technology that's pushing production, productivity, and, and wealth in the rich countries. This is not fair. It's a disaster. Now, what does Crowd wonder? We do the other way around. We go to some of these software companies and we say, so you're going to sell your product in the Western world for uh, $10 a month. We won't be able to do that. We will sell it for $5 a month. But we won't take 40% of the company. We won't send all the customer acquisition costs to the monopolists who have stolen from the people. Instead, we're going to give this house a sales commission to people selling directly in these countries. dollars a month, but we'll take $40, $4 a month for three years in sales commission. So the customer acquisition cost is going to stay locally in, in countries with ambitions who want to go somewhere, a sales commission. And countries who would have had to wait for 14 years for technology is going to get it day one. We're going to change the whole thing around. We're going to push money into this organization, into these countries. We're going to create jobs. We're going to create the future. We're going to change, we're going to give you the means to change your own future. Wow. But you have to work hard. You have to commit. I commit to stay for 10 years. You have to commit to never give up. Because the impossible is... Yeah.